The firing woke Jack. He was inured to the occasional grumble of Russian artillery and could sleep through the intermittent crash of falling mortars, but this was a new, if familiar, sound. It was the regular crackle of musketry, augmented by the ear-battering roar of controlled volleys. Arthur! Jack shook Elliot awake. Listen! Well, that's more than a raid, Elliot said. Are we assaulting Sebastopol at last? I think Raggles would have let us know if we were. Jack hauled damp trousers onto cold legs, dragged wet boots onto his wet stockings and slipped on his limp, damp jacket. Buckling on his sword belt, he checked his revolver and opened the flap of the tent. The camp was astir with officers hastily dressing as they hurried between the tents, officers' servants dashing on errands and faces turning anxiously towards the firing. Windrush! Major Snodgrass tucked a flask inside his tunic as he appeared. Get along to the front and see what's happening. Elliot, you form up a couple of platoons in case they are needed. Yes, sir. A cold dawn was greying the eastern sky, spreading broad white fingers across dark clouds. Jack could smell powder smoke and hear the crash of volley fire as he stumbled into the communication trench that led forward. As always, his feet sunk into cold mud. He followed the zigzags, bumped into a man staggering in the opposite direction and cursed. Where the devil are you going? Jack snarled. Hospital, the man said, and only then did Jack see that his right arm hung uselessly inside his tunic and blood smeared his face. So you should. Jack tried to make amends. I see you're from the Royal Malvins. Yes, sir. The soldier tried to come to attention. Stand easy, man, Jack said. What's happening up there? Russians, sir. Thousands of them. They came out of the dark, right at our trenches. We did not see them until they were close. Thank you. Off you go and get that wound attended to. Jack stepped back to let the man squeeze past and hurried on, ducking as a bullet whizzed overhead. The Russians are coming! Towsel haired and wide eyed, the private staggered back along the communication trench. They've broken through! We'll stop them! Jack stood directly in his path. You are a British soldier. Go and act like it! The man stared at him. He was unwounded with a smooth face smeared with mud and the buff facings of the Royal Malvins. Jack turned him around and pushed him toward the front. Where is your rifle? I don't know, sir. You'll have dropped it in the action. Go back the way you came and find it. If you can't, then take one from one of your dead or wounded comrades. Either way, find a rifle and get back to your place in the line. Jack kept his voice low and issued clear instructions. He knew that fighting in the trenches was confused and it was easy for men to get lost. Shouting at the man would only make him worse. Get along now and do your duty. The man nodded, but another volley made him flinch. He ducked, shaking with fear, but if he ran away, he was liable to be charged with desertion in the face of the enemy, which could mean execution. Better to be killed by the Russians than hanged in disgrace. You can't make me. You took the Queen's shilling, son. What's your name? Jack grabbed the private as he tried to push to the rear. What's your name? Breeden, sir. And your first name? Tom, sir. Well, Tom, this is war. Nobody likes it, but it's part of the soldier's bargain. Imagine what your mother would think if she saw you had deserted. She would not be happy at all, would she? Breeden shook his head, evidently close to tears. No, sir. Well, go and make her proud, Tom. Make her proud of her son. Jack turned him round again, feeling the lack of muscle on his skinny shoulders, and gave him a gentle push toward the front. Come on, Tom. I'm going with you. <laughs>